hey, it's me. Remember how much fun we had? Like, I can't do that anyway. So last week I interviewed Jojo and I forgot to press record on the Skype call. Ah, oh, but thankfully she's agreed to do another interview. So here it is. Hello. Hey. Hey. So we had a fuck up last week where I completely forgot to press record on our interview. Oh, good. It, you know, this is the second time's a charm. That's it. Oh, you've got your mum in the background. Oh, yeah. Look at Joanna looking all sexy. Just for you guys. And then there's me. There you go. <laughs> Have a bit of lunch. What time is it over there? Uh, 4.45. And you're, just so people, we can backtrack, you're in LA. Yep, in LA, um, sheltering in place with my dog and my mom. And me to, oh, Guppy, do you want to say hi? Oh, so my little you. baby. What's his name? Her name is Agape. She okay. is a healer, a mystical creature. Yeah, you're so, people are so lucky if they've got animals in, in quarantine, I feel. I know. We really are. They are they're just so unshakable you know and they're just happy we're here so it really keeps things keeps things light totally i've been watching your instagram and you're doing so many sort of like live updates on what you're doing and a lot of them are really uplifting you're not like wow wow this is happening well like you're like baking cookies or <laughs> inviting people in on your live stream um is that sort of so you can foster a community of positivity it's not something that i intentionally set out to to do, I think that that's just the vibe I'm on. So I'm happy that it comes across that way though, because I do think that there's so, so many things that we can focus on that we can't control. So something we can control is our mindset and like choosing to look at things, choosing to look at what we do have. Like I have the ingredients to make these delicious vegan cookies. I have amazing people from around the world that, you know, get on and we sing together. I discover new talent or I connect with, you know, another artist like Tori Kelly or Jesse J or so, yeah, I, I, I choose to look for the light as much as I can. Totally. You even had a, an orthopedic surgeon on, was it yesterday that could sing? Yes. Yes. Uh, Dr. Elvis Francois. He was amazing. So I'm an orthopedic surgery resident, which is uh, so like the last years of training after medical school. It's surreal. It's like we're in a Netflix special. And I would love to do a little something with you if you're, course, if you're down. I've been listening to your voice for so long, and so it's just honored to meet you to be able to share a little bit of music. So, of course. Ah, of course, yay! Of course. It's undeniable that we should be together. I feel just like a little child whose life is just begun. You came and breathed a new life into this lonely heart of mine. How are you going to be a doctor and look like that and sound like that? <laughs> like, that's not fair. <laughs> How did you find him? I found him. I think he was on some, like, morning shows or something. Um, it just saw, like, you know, heroes on the front lines. And because he can sing so well, he had just picked up a lot of traction. And then I posted something about him on my story. And he's like, oh, my God. I, you know, I, wow, thank you. We should sing together sometime. So just, I love the internet. So, so random, so cool. And, and what a hero. I mean, you know, he's, he's on the path to be an orthopedic surgeon, but obviously um, most, doc, you know, healthcare professionals from other areas are like, you know, pitching in where they can with COVID-19 pandemic. Imagine if he was your doctor and then he sang to you as you woke up. It'd be beautiful. <laughs> that would be, I would be like, I'm still, I'm still dreaming, right? This is <laughs> really happening <laughs> oh so we're here we're here to talk about good to know which is your album and when is it coming out Woo! may 1st yeah may 1st if you had to describe the album to someone who hasn't listened to jojo since get out how mm. would you describe it delicious it's sensual it's um it's definitely a journey for the senses like i and i i think that you'll get to know me very well i'm an imperfect person, um, but I'm really trying to figure it out. The songs are just bomb. It's really dope. And like I said, it's definitely very sexy. Totally. Man is a really sexy song. That's the first one that's come out. And I think listening to it first up, it sounds like you're just like 
placing out the requirements for what you want in a man, but that's not actually the point of the song, is it? No, um, it's not. And that's why there's no men in the video. It's just me and my girls. It's, it's about finding that comfort and confidence within yourself because I have looked to feel, to find happiness and wholeness through relationships. Like I've been in a relationship pretty much since I was 14, not with the same person, but like, you know, two years here, three years here, whatever. And in the making of this album, I was like, I got to stop this. I have to stop just um, running from learning to love myself and like really provide and care for myself. That's what the song is about. It's basically saying nobody can love me like I can. And until I really find that person that's really worth getting out of this self partnership with, because I'm having a good time by myself, they can have a safe distance because like I'm just <laughs> self preserving right now. I'm just hydrating and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's the perfect time for it. I think that's really interesting um, that especially as women, like we have to make a conscious effort, probably guys as well, to like notice when relationships and chasing relationships becomes toxic. Cause I think it's, it's like a habit. It's like, but it's not frowned upon like drugs or alcohol, but it sort of works. That's such a good point. Okay. I agree. I think that it can become, if you want to liken it to an addiction or, you know, it very much could be an addiction, like love, um, attention, comfort. And I just, yeah, I identified that I was running from some necessary experiences with myself, loneliness, you know, like discomfort. Um, and I couldn't self-soothe in that, in that same way anymore of recycling and going back. Cause honey, I'm a master recycler. I will go back. <laughs> if the door is still open, I'll be like, you want to make out? You're like, and I'm just, I can't do that anymore. Hey, it's me. Remember how much fun we had? Like, I can't do that anymore. Oh God. Okay. Let's say hypothetically though, if you had to find someone to hunker down with for the next year, what kind of person would you want in okay. your house with you? We're talking about like a romantic arrangement. What kind of person? They'd have to be mad funny and passionate. I do like athletic people. They, I'd prefer they not be a professional athlete because y'all, y'all are trouble. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, like someone who respects their mind and body and who loves people, who is humane. I need us to have a good physical, mental, emotional, spiritual connection. I want it all. So, yeah, someone who I'm attracted to and who is a great person who's funny. Totally. And I guess, yeah, if the more you work on yourself, the more you can end up opening the door and you're perfect as well. That's what I tell myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling myself the same thing and there's no such thing as perfection like what's so cool though is that what you what like what your what you imagine in your head as your ideal partner what they look like or what they are thank god it's not the same as me so we're not fighting over the same person you know what I mean? like it looks different for everybody I'll never be perfect I, I'm so so flawed but I I'm, you know, I'm excited to to meet that person where we can accept each other's flaws something that I read about when I was looking at the album, was that you released it with Warner, but also with Clover, which is your label. Right. When did you, when did you start a label? When I signed to Warner, it was important to me that I had more ownership and vested interest this time around. I didn't want to just do a regular signing to a label. I wanted to have the opportunity to sign artists myself and to move forward and um, expand in my career. So that meant for me starting Clover Music, and having the access and the, the resources that Warner has is, is just a great, it's a great partnership. So I'm, I'm happy so far. Let's go. What's the significance of a clover for you? Oh, okay. So I have, I'm not flipping you off, but I have a, a four leaf clover right here on my finger. And I'm from, I'm from Massachusetts and I have a lot of Irish heritage. And I just love the idea of, the, the four leaf clover, how rare it is, how it symbolizes luck, blessings, um, you know, the, the holy trinity, all of these things that I spend some time thinking about, you know, the, it's not that I'm like uber Catholic, but I did grow up in that world. And um, I like thinking of all the different representations that I've read about it. So. And you were eating those four leaf clovers the other day. <laughs> I just saw them at the store, you know, because I made a pilgrimage to the grocery store the other day and I was like, oh my God, I haven't had these in forever. Let's go. Who cares? Who cares? It's isolation. Yeah. What did you do for Easter? My mom made a delicious 
vegan feast. We've been, well, I've been mostly cooking for us and doing a lot of plant-based things. So we had like Brussels sprouts with fake bacon. We had green beans. We had um, Italian sausage. So again, everything plant-based and then like sweet potatoes with cinnamon and what? Cauliflower mashed potatoes with almond, <laughs> mozzarella. It's really good. But yeah, we just, me and mom kicked it. Did some meditation, read some inspirational stuff. Lovely day. So you have this song on the album called Pedialyte. Am I saying that right? Yeah, you, you said it exactly right. And that's like Hydrolyte for Australians. What's the, what's the story behind that song? I mean, I can assume that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure your assumption is completely spot on. It's just basically after a, after a night out, you have depleted your electrolytes. And uh, we I, we set out like when we got into the, the studio that, that day that it was me, Lido and Boy Matthews. Um, Boy Matthews was really hungover. And I was like, oh, shit. Someone needs to like get you some Pedialyte or whatever. And we're like, let's write a hangover anthem. Like there's so many drinking songs. I wanted something that felt a little bit like a Irish drinking song. Like, also, I, I love the feeling of, I remember really loving um, Rihanna's Cheers to the, Cheers to the freaking weekend. I drink to that, yeah. Oh, let the Jameson sink in. So I wanted something that made me feel a little bit like that. That's where it came from. We never say the word Pedialyte in the song, but it's, it's just about being hungover and kind of dealing with the morning after. That sounds like such a fun, um, like, creation process that you can just come into the studio, someone's got a hangover, and it, like, clicks a thought pattern for a song. It's fun, yeah. Sometimes it's like that, and, and that's why I really enjoy staying open and not always being... I mean, sometimes I'm like this is what I want to write about. But sometimes um, that's what's cool about collaboration. And you can be like, oh, I've been there before. Let's expand on that, you know. And finally, what is one, what is one positive thing that you hope will come from this whole debacle? I hope that nature gets a reset from this. I, I know that's a really optimistic thing to say, but I, I know it's going to be such a hard road for so many people. Like, uh, I'm thankful that I, I have everything that I need and I'm comfortable and I have enough to eat and a, a place to live and everything. I know it's going to be a tough road for people. Maybe this can undo some of the damage that we've done as human beings to the planet.